Hello, everybody. Hello. This is the Two Half Squads, the greatest podcast on the air about the greatest game in the world. You got to practice. That would be Advanced Squad Leader. I'm Dave. I'm Jeff. And we have a very special guest with us tonight. Wherever he is, up or down or to the right or left, I never know. Welcome, Doug. Hi, I'm Doug. Doug. Pleased to be here. Yeah, we're very glad you could join us. Really super glad. And um, where are we talking to you from? You're in Europe somewhere or South Africa? Uh, no, just north of you. I'm up in Ottawa in Canada. Oh, oh okay. you should have driven down to come to the <laughs> studio. <laughs> yeah, short drive. Um, and I'll point out that Doug did email us and said, hey, I got some info about Vassal, if you guys are interested, and we are. And I'm saying that because people out there, I, I I just worry that people think, oh, they always just call the same people or they call people they like. And we don't, you know, we're really, really open to suggestions. And there's lots of longtime ASLers out there that we would love to have contact us. Um, and it really hadn't, it just hadn't occurred to us to call somebody or to contact somebody about Vassal. And so we, when we got your email, we were really excited and Glad you could join us tonight. After a little uh, technical difficulties, we finally got everything working. Yeah, sure. and you know, I, I I listened to the podcast, and now I watch the podcast. So I thought, well, we've got some things we could talk about. What uh, what better way to show people a few things about Basel than to be online? Right, it's an online game. That's right, absolutely. That's right. And Jeff and I don't do a lot of Basel since we're back in person gaming. So that is an aspect that we miss a lot. And a lot of our listeners do a lot of remote gaming. Yeah. So we'll let you kind of get started. We, as usual, we like to know uh, how you got into gaming and did you ever regret it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, only once a day, every day. Yeah. But there you go. Um, I got into uh, ASL, uh, in fact, squad leader right at the beginning. Uh, Buddy and I were at in university at the the time we had another game it was a desert based tank game second world war i forget the the name of it but we went back to the game shop saw this thing called squad leader bought it and then bought all the other squad leader and uh modules and the minute asl was out we went right into uh into that uh and uh i played this this one fellow for about 15, 20 years, never played anybody else, didn't know how many people were out there uh, to play. Um, took a break probably around sort of the early 2000s. You know, you got family and work commitments and and things like that. Uh, taught my young son to, to play and he still plays. Um, and then about 2010, started to get back uh, into it again, played, uh, started to use Vassal a bit. And then 2013, I went to my first tournament. So this is, you know, uh, 30 years after I started. And I finally played a person who wasn't my best friend or my son. <laughs> Those had been my only two ASL partners for yeah. uh, for that whole time. And about the same time, I uh, started to, to do some Vassal coding. I had been doing some other coding for a, a number of years, just kind of monkeying around with it, completely self-taught. I was using uh, Visual Basic. Again, the, the the buddy who I gamed with, we were also working on some, some computer stuff to, uh, together involving ASL. And we finally, after using a variety of uh, sort of Microsoft products and, and new generation tools from them, had to give up the ghost and say, look, Vassal's there. Why don't we just uh, live with that, use that and see what we can uh, do with that. So I decided, well, I would also want to contribute to Vassal, not just use it, but see um, if I could uh, um, learn something about uh, coding by getting involved in that. And I did. And Probably about 2015 is when I first started to actually contribute stuff up to uh, to Vassal. I was quite interested in the line of sight stuff, so I helped uh, enrich that a little bit from uh, the uh, the great start that uh, that it had. 
And uh, so now I find myself one of the principal people sort of making changes to Vassal. There are two ways to make change to Vassal. You can do it through, uh, you know, computer code, through Java code, but also the, the Vassal with two S's module has a lot of edit tools built right in. And so you can use those, a lot of the counters and uh, graphics are done by using the built-in Vassal tool. So I do sort of a bit of both now and encourage other people to uh, to get in on it. Uh, you know, we're all standing on the, uh, the shoulders of, of giants. There are some people who worked really hard back in the day to, to build Vassal. I mean, I wouldn't even think that I contributed you know, one percent of the of the Vassal code that exists. There's an enormous code base down there that that's been uh, built up over the years, and I tinker with it a bit here and there, and I'm glad to do that and and make some enhancements. But really, a lot of the code is is there and uh, just keeps on working. And we debug it now and again and get some uh, uh, some problems sorted. But uh, it's uh, it's been a real joy to. Uh, to be involved in this, and I hope that the tool keeps getting better for players. I like using it. Yeah, we didn't use it for a long time, and then um, when COVID came around, we had yep. to. Yeah, absolutely. It, re it really, I, I'm sure it pushed a lot of people into using it that yep. never would have touched it before. Yeah, exactly. And it was, it was amazing. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. And I'm a, I'm a computer consultant, not a very good one apparently, because <laughs> Vassal astounds me uh, as to what it can do. And when Dave and I started tinkering with it and seeing all the stuff that it could do, it was just fantastic. And we just thought, wow, we were, we're so glad to, to be pushed into that. Yeah. And how, so who, who's behind Vassal? Yeah. And how many separate people do you think have had a hand in that, I guess? Now, again, we're talking Vassal with two S's here. The, right. the yeah. Um, I honestly don't know. I mean, if you look on their website at the number of modules that have been built up that that they support, uh, uh, it's, you know, there's hundreds of them there. They're churning out new uh, versions on a regular basis now. And apparently, I was just seeing some uh, information on one of their chat boards where they were saying that's a deliberate strategy, do less in each version, but just grind the versions out as they uh, as they debug problems. So they can turn around, uh, you know, within a month, a new version that fixes, you know, a bunch of different things that people have run into. And so uh, that makes it a little awkward for the people like myself who are building a module that sits on top of Vassal. Oh. But, <clears throat> Uh, nothing we can't live with. We just have to be a bit more uh, careful. It's a, it's a change in pattern from them. It was a fairly stable tool for a while. And now we, uh, we have to work with a tool that's constantly being upgraded and updated, which is good because there are new features. And there's a lot of stuff that the Vassal guys build have built into Vassal that we can now use to add things to Vassal. So it really, uh, you know, we, we like where they're going and what they're, uh, what what they're uh, what they're doing, but so how many of them there is I don't know. Certainly their forum is very active, and I hear back from a bunch of different people whenever I've got a question about how to do something or uh, I found a bug uh, in their code, and uh, they're getting pretty responsive. So there's got to be more of them than there is of us. <laughs> I can say that. Yeah. Mm. And who was behind Vasil then? Was that you? Uh, so Vasil with one S, the uh, you know the game we play uh, yeah. is as I said that's uh, Rodney Kinney. I mean he, I think he was kind of involved in both of them. I I never met him, mm -hmm. haven't met him, but uh, there've been a number of different people over the years, and uh, most of those guys have contributed something and moved on to uh, to other things, and now there's sort of a new group of us. Uh, uh, coming on uh, on board, but we're we're a pretty small uh, bunch. I'm probably the guy who's doing the only actual coding. But as I said, there's a bunch of edit tools that we can use, and there's maybe three, four, five uh, people who are working hard at at those and some of the new features that I'll be 
showing you tonight come from their good, good work. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So when like they do a board for like a bounding fire product or something, are there different people that put up all the boards somehow or? Uh, yes. Now, now the boards are, uh, are another sort of bit all to, to themselves, but they're uh, probably, well, I don't know how many people there are working on boards. There's probably about half a dozen that I know, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there are many people working on boards in the background that I never find out about. But usually the boards come through to me at the sort of end of the day for posting up on uh, the Vasil uh, GitHub uh, repository, which is what enables us to use the auto downloading feature. So when you're using uh, the game now, you just click on the drop down and you click on a board and it downloads. If you don't have it, it just comes right to you. If there's a new version, it comes right to you. So oh, you still don't have those boards up on Vassal Info. But if you're downloading a board on Vassal Info, you're doing it wrong because you don't need to do that anymore. Just click on a board. It'll be there. So if you just get a new module like uh, Sword and Fire, uh, the Manila one, uh, we we've got that up now, and all you do is look for SAF and uh, in the drop down list, and you'll get it. Oh, because yeah, that I struggled with that for a long time initially. Yeah, because it wasn't boards. always that way. That's a feature that we've um, we added updating first of existing boards, and then we changed it. It was one of the things. Uh, 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 that I think I actually did was to make it so that even if you didn't have the board, uh, it would list all the boards that are available and you just click it and it comes down to you. We probably put that in two, three years ago. And the yeah. overlays too then, huh? Uh, the overlays you have to go and get. Okay. I'm working on those. There's about a half a dozen overlays, which if you click, they will check to see if they're, uh, they're updated. The numbered overlays, one to seven. Uh, they'll work that way. The rest don't. The rest you still have to go and get. But, uh, you know, I've started somewhere and uh, I'm going to keep working on trying to make them uh, come down just the same way that uh, uh, boards do. Yeah, well, we'll let you go then so you can get back yeah. to that. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Because that was on. very up. It was hard. And <laughs> Dave Timmon and, you know, Jeff and I got started like together and we were taught by Bill Forg who put out a big email when COVID hit, Hey, everybody, you know, it's time for y'all to check out, you know, the, the online. And then I got Dave going and yeah, I, I remember like we were both looking at something and I said, no, no, there's a, there's the overlay. There's a building in that hex. And he's going, what? I don't see anything. So yeah. is that, was that possible? Like his version didn't have it at his yes. house and mine. I might yes, so if, it. if you if you don't both if you haven't both downloaded the overlays, one of you is going to see it and and the other one isn't. Yeah. Yeah. So it took us and a while. They to don't automatically out. download. So yeah, that's it's still a bit clunky around those things, and that yeah. uh, gives us something to work on. Yep. Well, it's amazing uh, <clears throat> all this all the stuff it does, and it's amazing because you don't have to clean up at the end of the night. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Jeff hated yeah. cleaning up. Uh, I'd come over here a month later, he'd still have the game out that we. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be. I'm kind of getting lazy. Well, I'm lazy. But I don't know. Yeah, I'm less motivated now. But yeah. <laughs> well, I just recently spent a weekend playing the two big uh, Red Factory scenarios: the Last Bid from RB and Men of Steel. And one combined scenario, we had four players on each side. So you've got a couple of hundred squads per side, about 175. You've got vehicles or whatever. I mean, the, the pile of counters left over to be sorted back into, uh, you know, our uh, our storage units after that was pretty big. It took a while. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> In Vassal, you click it close, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, where? how does... Um... And I don't want to spend too much time on the technology, but I'm just interested in it. Where is Vassal hosted? I mean, where where are the servers? Well, how come it's a, free? How come it's how come? Is there a are secret you doing location something? which I'm not allowed to disclose? Are you tapping I don't know, into I my bank account? I honestly don't know where the 
the servers are the the vassal with two S's. They handle all of that. So it's their servers, it's their connectivity. So when you you know when you get dropped off, uh, vassal, don't call me. <laughs> okay. It's it's nothing to do with vassal. Uh, yeah, that's all handled by them. Uh, I mean, they must have a fair number, but I I don't know. I don't know anything about uh, that side of it. Uh, I just uh, we just use it, and uh, I mean it works. It's great. I I rarely have trouble uh, getting on or or staying on. So it's pretty reliable in in my experience. It is, yeah. It, it's just amazing, <clears throat> and the fact that it's free. I keep thinking I'm going to wake up and find I'm being charged or something. Yeah. So um, the the uh, amount of products that have been coming out, you've, you've been involved in it how long now on Basil? Probably, probably about uh, six, seven years. Yeah, okay. And you've seen, I mean, we've seen an uptick in the number of products that are coming out. I mean, you find that overwhelming or do you just take on whatever you can take on and let others fill in what they can? Uh, definitely the second part. Uh, I do the things I want to do and uh, get them done and try to churn them out in a regular schedule so it feels coherent to users like your, yourself. You get used to a version in the spring and a version in the, in the fall and uh, what, what gets done gets done. And if other people contribute, that's great. But uh, I'm not feeling... Uh, you know, I, I don't get pressured by it. If something doesn't make one version, it, it'll come in the next. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I think for our users in particular, as I said, Vassal has a, a faster uh, schedule of new versions coming out. I'm going to stick with, with two for the actual game because there are still a few issues with compatibility to one version uh, to another. That's one of our, our big challenges and we're trying to avoid problems with that. So I don't wanna have too many versions, you know, coming one after the other because that's uh, when people are not gonna be able to open games or things won't show up that, uh, that they expect to see. So I think we're gonna stick with two versions a year for, for a while. That sounds decent. But maybe now that we've been talking about uh, these versions, we should go have a look at them. Yeah, that would, yeah, be, great. That would be great. I'll just try to share my screen here. And uh, as it happens, uh, I have a, a game open. So let's see if that works. You should be seeing a, a Vassal game now. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, I'm playing the Germans in this one. I'm absolutely getting uh, my... Uh, my butt kicked uh, in it. I'm not making anywhere near uh, enough progress, but uh, it was a fun, uh, fun scenario. So uh, a couple of things. This is version 6.5, 6 uh, which is the current version released in uh, last fall in, in November. I'm uh, working on 6.66 uh, 6 and we'll, we'll see some things about that. Uh, in a few uh, in a few secs, um, one of the things you'll you'll note uh, some users will note here is that my screen doesn't look like theirs uh, does. There are two ways basically to operate Vassal. You can do it as a combined window, which is what I have here, or you can do it. Uh, where each window is quite separate, and you if for those who have two. Uh, monitors or more, that is uh, a good way to go. So you can shift some of the information stuff off to one side and get more map board on your uh, on your screen. So uh, the uh, the easy way to do that is just uh, go to preferences. Everybody should spend a little bit of time in preferences knowing what's uh, knowing what's up. And I believe I'm in the right. Oh, uh, I'm here for combined. Yes, right in the middle. Uh, I don't think I can really indicate, but just where you see the 512 uh, in the uh, text box, right in the middle of the screen, you right. look up above there, use combined application window. Uh, if you check it, you get what I get. If you uncheck it and then restart, 
you will get uh, each window under your uh, under your own control. Uh, one of the things many people probably won't uh, recognize is the uh, five uh, buttons, the gray and the green ones that are just above where I where I click there. Uh, those are buttons that are added by an extension, and uh, those ones wor uh, work for uh, for starter kits. Uh, they do some of the dice rolls that you need in uh, starter kit. I don't play starter kit myself, but somebody told me what they needed, and so I built that uh, extension for them. Extensions are very helpful, and uh, we'll talk about those uh, uh, maybe a little bit later in terms of... Yeah some do's or don'ts uh, with, uh, with that. One of the things that we, that I've been focusing on over uh, the last couple of years is to try to reduce the number of times that Basil will crash because there's nothing worse than being in a, uh, in a game and just having the whole thing crash to hell. You get the little Vassal bug window up and those bugs go to the guys at Vassal with two S's. They, uh, there's a spot in their, um, their GitHub repository where I can go and see all of the ones that apply to uh, uh, Vassal, our game. When I started uh, coding, there were regularly uh, things showing up there. I'm pleased to say that they show up there now very uh, irregularly. Um, there was one in uh, one thing that I did in uh, in 6.65 with respect to overlays that has caused a bug uh, in uh, some 6.65 uh, games. We'll we'll have that fixed in 6.66. It actually causes a crash, but uh, that's uh, the first bug that I've really had to deal with in probably a year and a half that actually causes a crash. So mm -hmm. the, there may be things that don't work quite as well, but at least your game <clears throat> is unlikely to collapse on you and you have to start again. So that's that's a good thing. Now if it if it crashes uh if it crashes on one person's computer, it could be not crashed on the other computer. Absolutely. That's right. And so and when so, that the person that crashed, once they rejoin the session, everything will yes. come up for them. Yeah, if you're so, playing online, the first thing the other player should do is save the game. <laughs> yeah, and then you can reconnect. Absolutely right about uh, about that. I, yeah, I was just wondering if an auto save would be a useful feature. I'm, I'll be probably throwing out a couple of things that pop into my mind as we come upon them. Something that I'm I'm doing some work in a Microsoft platform now, and they've got an auto save feature that turns on, and yep. so you can just saves every two minutes. Yep. A lot of uh, a lot of games are are, are built that uh, are built that way. Uh, it's a good idea. I I haven't investigated that. I can't speak to the feasibility of that right off the uh, top of my head. But we can uh, uh, we can explore that. Yeah, it's a good thought. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the other things we've been doing re recently is bringing some new uh, units into the game. And uh, everybody knows how to get to the counters here. Uh, one of the, the amusing questions that came up recently had a couple of people write in saying they couldn't find the Swedes. Where were the Swedes? Well, we've we've had a sort of a stable set of, of nations for a while that they had forgotten that this uh, box that I've just popped up for you, you can scroll and there they are down at the bottom of the list. Oh yeah, it's always <laughs> scroll. Yeah, it's, it's always and, there. Yeah, yeah, and, it, it, yeah. yeah, so, and we've got the uh, Ethiopians uh, from Hollow Legions mm -hmm. in, in there as, as well. The uh, the ones from, from Korea, uh, Hakapala came in the, the Finns a couple of years back. So, uh, there's been a good bit of work to get uh, new uh, new counters into uh, into the game, and then we've been adding some some functionality, and uh, a lot of that functionality has come in without uh, people having to write a, a, a line of code using the Vassal tools that I talked about, and most of this is not being done by me, which is good, and that that least frees me up to do other stuff. But we've got a number of people contributing now. Many people will have seen this, but I'm just going to show you 
uh, a couple of things. So if we look at this AFE smack dab in the middle of the screen, you know, you break the main armament or something like that, and you've got a counter on it, and then, you know, you get a counter on it because it's uh, immobilized or something like that. You get a lot of counter clutter. So uh, one of the ways we uh, chose to deal with that is by developing a, uh, a bad things menu. So if you mouth the main gun, uh, you get something right on the counter like that. Mm, nice. uh, so say you then uh, try to repair it and you, you get the repair roll. You just click the same thing again. Then you know it's uh, it's disabled. So you can do that for machine guns. You can do it for immobilized. The immobilized obviously shows up over the uh, 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 movement the, point. The, the oh. Movement point. So oh. you can uh, you can it really limits counter clutter, but still gets uh, the information there. So nice. uh, that that was uh, a nice uh, addition. And then just recently, uh, going further with that. We now have um, uh, an ammo depletion uh, one, which is not in this menu here. Why would it not be? Well, it's, it's nice. The immobile is over the movement point, so you can still see yes, all exactly. the factors yeah. on the yeah. counter. Why would it be here? For you listeners at home who aren't watching on the video. Yes. Well, that would be yes. Uh I do apologize for those people who who can't see the the value uh, uh, of uh, being able to uh, uh, see me click around the uh, the map board. I'm just bringing another vehicle on now. So this is a vehicle that has depletable special ammo. The other mm -hmm. vehicle that I uh, picked up uh, here before did not. So we got oh. a new one here that does again the same thing. You just right click. You, you pick up uh, depleted ammo, uh, you toggle it on and off. So uh, then if it has uh, decided to run out of smoke, ah, now we get a glitch right away here because this should be showing something down below. Let's have a look at that. Why isn't that showing it? A number pops up, but... No, oh. there it is. There oh. it is. Uh, yes. I think I didn't toggle it on properly is what uh, what happened. Um, so if these these ones they show up in red. Let me just make that a little bigger with a with a, a strikeout. That obviously means those are depleted to uh, what they would normally appear like when they're good order. They just appear in uh, in black. So a couple of things okay. uh, like that. We've done just one last one. I'll show you on that. Uh, this is one that uh, I actually did myself, and that is putting uh, acquisition counters like these ones here is <clears throat> is all is very difficult to do. Yeah. I screw it up all the time. It takes me forever to do it. So I came up with the idea: right click, uh, add an acquisition. Boom! It's ah. right there on top of the tank. If you like uh, linking uh, your vehicle in your uh, your acquisition counter and not everybody does but for those that do like it while those two things are selected control alt l and then when you drag the acquisition counter to wherever you're shooting you've got your your linking uh, automatically done so that just simplifies the process of adding uh, acquisition uh the last thing i'll say here about sort of the the current version of vassal and and what i've uh shown here is that the the last three things i've shown they're all stuff that people can do using the vassal uh editor so if you open the vassal window and let, let me just uh uh again demonstrate that for folks who can see there's the vassal window you click on your module in this case we're using uh 6.5 and you hit the edit module mode. It's grayed out on the screen for those who can see it because we've got a game uh, open. If you didn't have the game open, you would click that edit module and you get uh, a set of uh, windows that come up and lets you play around with counters and do stuff on your own. And I know there are people who are out there customizing their Vassal modules the way they like it. I think that's that's great. Some 
people just do it for themselves or the people they play with on a regular basis. Uh, if you come up with good ideas and you want to share one and think maybe it should be in the uh, the, vein vassal, the, the main vassal module, don't hesitate to uh, to pass it on to me. I'd love to see it. And uh, most of the things I've just shown you, people just had an idea, they tried it themselves and then shared it with me. Yeah, that's great. That is great. One of one of my favorite things about <clears throat> Vassal when uh, when Dave and I started playing was right clicking on the different counters and seeing what was available. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah, it fun. Just, yeah, it was fun. It just blew me away too. That yeah. uh, it, all the stuff you could do. Right. And I forgot you can see all the games being played too. And in, in the, the window there. That's right. And if they're not locked, uh, you can go and uh, and join them. Most people will will let you join. Uh, uh, you know, do it, do it politely. Don't move their counters for them and yeah. things like that. But uh, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm just going to uh, click again, just on the manual, just have a look uh, on the, the menu, just have a look at that uh, menu screen uh, there. And uh, then we're going to switch over to uh, the 666. This is the, the one that I'm working on. It's not available uh, officially yet, but there is a beta version if uh, people want to help uh, test it. And this shows you some of the stuff that's coming. It will release officially in, pardon me, in uh, in April. One thing I forgot to do, let me go back and just do one thing. Mm -hmm. We go back to this one. Uh, and uh, I didn't show some of the stuff that's down here at the bottom of the screen. I'll zoom out as as well. These oh. are some of the, the tools that people add to their uh, Vassal games. There are a couple of different things that have uh, been uh, built. There's uh, there's Vassal templates um, uh, and uh, I'm blanking on the name of the other one uh, right now, but there's a couple of things that lets you do some fairly nifty things in terms of adding stuff around the map board. Uh, some people uh, like to uh, to do this and really dress up their games, put a lot of information, reference information around the uh, outside. Uh, so if you like those tools, they're they're there, and you can uh, you can use them. When I switch back to this game here, you will see only blankness because there are some people like myself who find all the stuff around the edges to be so interesting that it distracts us from actually playing mm, the game. Yeah. <laughs> and so I run a, a, a pretty minimalistic uh, screen when I uh, play. But the so nice you're thing about like the, uh, the vehicle sorry, notes, ahead. the vehicle notes is uh, one of the things you're talking about there with that they Yes, better. exactly. Can and, you click and drag that from this program or did they have to add it? Uh, you you need to use the tool to, but you can the the tool allows you to customize things a, a great deal. I'm not all that familiar with the details of that because, as I said, I prefer uh, just clarity, uh, clearness, yeah. and and not a whole lot of um, that kind of information around. But yes, there's a lot you can do to to add information right onto your your screen. And the good thing about Vassal is some like it some way, some like it another. And you can customize Vassal to be how you want it to, uh, to be, uh, which uh, I think is, uh, is a great part of the, uh, the tool. Yeah, so, so this, some, I'll just say definitely. some of the things around the board for the listeners without the, vi the visual, you know, are, yeah. are like the gun ordinance, the notes for the vehicles, the turn record chart and the, yeah. what that thing, what do you call that thing where you put the wind and the, clear conditions there's a yeah all the environmental counters uh, yeah like, yeah yeah yes. just so they know yep that's what we're yes, looking at exactly and uh people i've seen people with with you know they put photos of the the actual battle or whatever oh, or vehicle uh, around if if they like that so you can do uh you can do quite a lot of uh of things there yeah cool uh so now we're looking at uh 666 the beta version and first thing I'll do is uh, uh, talk about some of the things that have been happening in the underlying uh, Vassal game that 
just show up in our game when we get the benefit from, even though we we didn't do it. So so now we're looking at uh, 6.66, which is still under development. As I said earlier, you can uh, get a beta uh, version of that. Uh, first thing I want to show you is a couple of things that the Vazel guys built into Vazel, and we're now uh, reaping the benefits of. The first is that they've cleaned up the menus. Remember how it looked in 6.65? Well, this is what it looks like in, I'll just pick another one now for a sec there. Look at that one. I think it's much clearer and yeah. easier to read. Fonts bigger, it's tidied up. The uh, keystrokes are left aligned. Uh, and I think that's just a whole lot easier for users to deal with. The other thing is actually a suggestion that came to me from uh, Michael Rogers, a longtime uh, ASL uh, player. And he said, why don't we do what uh, many other computer games do and computer programs do and have a recently opened or played games menu? So uh, great idea. I thought I tried to do it within Vassal, couldn't do it spoke to the guys at Vassal. They played around with it for a while and it's now in Vassal. I think it's 3.69 that they introduced it. So if we look in the top left hand corner where the file menu always is, you see there's a new file menu there, a menu item there called Open Recent and it gives you a list of the games you played recently. Those games will be module specific. So if you're one of those people who can play a half a dozen different war games and remember the rules, uh, you're a better man than I, uh, <laughs> and uh, you will only see the games that you played on the particular module. And it may even be limited to, uh, to versions as well. So you'll only get the games you played with that version. I'm not 100% sure about that. I haven't had time to do enough uh, testing uh, on, uh, on that. So, uh, just a few things from uh, from the Vassal uh, team. One other thing that they've built in that we've now incorporated is uh, something called a movement trail. So if I select this 667 right in the middle of the board, and I'm going to move him, but before I start, I'm going to click on movement trail. And now when I move him, he's going to start leaving something uh, behind. Again, let me zoom in so people can see it. You'll see in P5 where he was is a green dot and a black line into P6. If I move him to Q7, that's oh. great. If I move him to uh, Q8, uh, you can see uh, his uh, his trend. Uh, this is one of those things that people are going to love or hate. Uh, there'll be people who will want to use mm. this. There are people who will curse us for having put it in. but. Yeah. You don't have to use it. You've got to click it on to use it. If you don't want to use it, you uh, you don't have to. Nice thing about it is that if I forget to turn it on, it uh, it doesn't uh, matter. If I move the, the medium machine gun into M6 and then to L5, and I think, damn, I'm not then my opponent, and, or we're not seeing the movement trails. I get, whoops, I have to actually click on the unit. Uh, it, oh, and then it, it shows it show where they went. So yeah, so yeah. like when we usually we play, we get confused, you know, when you get up to like uh, movement points five and it's the grain and then you're like, well, wait, did you count that right, Dave? I don't know. Yeah. And yeah. then where, you can click you... on it yeah. and it'll show, oh, I went this way. Does it? Yeah, I think it's going to be really two? good for AFVs. I, I, you know, I, I think most people can handle oh, infantry AFVs. movement, but for an AFE moving halfway across the board, yeah. it'll be super helpful. You get where you know a truck on a road or something, <laughs> and uh, it's going to go a long way, and you can you can see where it's gone. So, does it uh, show I, bypass also? Uh, yes, I mean in the in a sense. Let's uh, let's get a vehicle on the board here and. Uh, play around with uh, with that. So I uh, know that's not how we do it. And then it only shows it for that counter. So if you go on, you move a couple other counters and somebody questions a counter two moves ago. Well, we can always explore that and just uh, find out. So yeah. uh, here we go. We've got... Uh, yeah, I think you just click on it. And it'll yeah, yeah. okay. So we'll, we'll turn on movement trails. Uh, we'll start off with a bypass right away, then we'll move into another hex, and then we'll move another hex. So yes, it 
It shows yes. the bypass right there. Whoops, I clicked it off, but put mm -hmm. it back on. There it, yeah, back it shows on. the uh, it shows the bypass. If I uh, yep. shift oh, yes. for the select, yep. so I, I now have two units selected. It will show if that other unit has already moved, it'll show that. If I continue to, you know, if I say I move them both, uh, it'll it'll track uh, it'll track those. Uh, let's quick click away. Let's move the uh, the yeah, six 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 again way. into the building and yeah, come back here. Forward. It still oh. remembers what those guys uh, did until you clear the movement counter off by going clearing hitting the movement button up on the the menu bar. Now when you click, it doesn't uh, okay. it doesn't remember them. So eventually, at some point, uh, when you when you clear the the mark moved off, uh, it, it forgets it, but uh, until then it'll remember it. So, uh, as I say, I think people who like it are going to really like it and, uh, people who don't just won't use it. That's, yeah. uh, that's good. I, I love that. I just, I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. We, uh, I saw it in, a, in one or two other games and, uh, there were uh, modules created with Vassal, and they used a much thicker line and uh, and a, a, a larger dot. We we have the flexibility to sort of play with that. I kind of like the the fairly uh, thin, uh, small uh, marker. Why did that? Come on. Uh, yeah. We made the the AFV one bigger than the. Infantry one, mm -hmm. uh, when I say uh, we, it wasn't me, it was somebody else did all this uh, good work. And uh, we'll, we'll see how people react to it and uh, we can adjust if necessary. What else was I gonna show? I, about? Think, the, I think the infantry yeah. movement uh, tracing should be little footsteps though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if we have that capability. I think it has to be, maybe we can make it a dotted line, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the flexibility is uh, is there. Um, just uh, we've done a few more uh, adding uh, markers and uh, counters. If you have uh, a gun, poor old guns, we never do anything with them, but we did something this time. So if you've got a gun and you set it up in this orchard hex, and you want to mark that it's a non-emplaced gun. You don't have to remember whether it's emplaced or not. You can now uh, oh. just, uh, again, from the menu, call up a counter. And if you have one of those uh, fancy German uh, vehicles, we put a little marker on for, for the... Uh, the uh, I pronounce it Scherzen, but I'm not sure that's the right pronunciation. Yeah, part. I think that but is works, correct. Works for us. Yeah. <clears throat> you see, you get a little red uh, uh, SZ there on the. Oh, uh, it on adds the, the. So you can keep track uh, of, uh, you know, without having to put a counter on it. Um, and, you know, for this optional sort of uh, uh, thing, and I guess gyros would be another uh, one we could do a, a similar kind of thing for. Uh, so again, you can you can hide it if you don't want your opponent to know. You know there are some scenarios which say two of your four uh, tanks have uh, Scherzen or gyros or something like that, and at some point you uh, you know if it gets revealed, you may want to mark it. But until then, uh, until then, not. So that's just a, a hint of uh, some of the things that are coming in six point six six. There's a whole bunch of bug fixes which are uh, listed on the, uh, uh, on the website and uh, they'll be useful for, uh, for, uh, for people to, uh, to do. We did have a, uh, some problems with what we call the chat window. This is the, the, the window up in the, the top of the screen just below the toolbar. Uh, I made some changes in there. Uh, in 6.65, and there were a few bugs, and we've got most of those bugs sorted out. You'll notice in uh, in 6.66, uh, if you do uh, dice rolling, that um, the uh, the dice colors are a little different, 
Uh, I think the image of the dice is sharper. One of the things that we've uh, we've done, people didn't uh, necessarily fall in love with the first set of colors that I picked. Um, are you seeing the preferences? Mainly? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So now, if you want to change the colors, you've got some standard colors, but you've also got the nationality colors. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, say cool you're nice. playing a uh, a British versus Japanese scenario. Uh, one of you could have your dice show up in the the British color. Uh, the other one could use the Japanese color, or you could use just use whichever colors you like, depending yeah, on how you that. like it. And again, they will show up there. There's the 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 British, and I did the single die in the Japanese just to show you the yeah. difference. Yeah, like that is so, cool. And you you can do the same thing. For the dice over the the map over here, uh, there's a, just another set of preferences for for them. Chat window does chat window dice over the map. Again, you've got the same drop down, so we can have the uh, uh, the axis uh, miners and uh, who do they want to play? They want to play the Russians, so we'll go with that. Um, and that will now uh, show up down here. There's the axis yeah. minus, and there's the uh, there's the Russian. So obviously, if you were doing this in a game, you'd set both to uh, right. whatever color you wanted. Your opponent would do uh, would do the reverse. So that's um, that's kind of uh, what we've been doing and what uh, what's coming in the the next little while. Fantastic, excellent, yeah. Um, maybe if uh, I got a few uh, few thoughts of uh, just about, I would say, if you were to to ask me, uh, you know, what are the problems that you people raise with me the most? Where do uh, you know uh, frantic mm -hmm. posts up on Game Squad? I can't find this, or how do I do this? There's probably three things that I would uh, <laughs> I, I would say. One is. Uh, make sure you you set your your board directory uh, and that's where your maps actually go so in preferences yeah you go to the vassal up. tab yeah. and you got to set this it doesn't do it automatically uh, and that's where you put your boards also when you're downloading your overlays which you you still have to do you should have a subdirectory under boards you should have a directory called overlays and you that's where your overlays have to go so those are two important uh things to um uh to get right uh and if you're if you're not finding boards uh, it's probably because this isn't uh, uh set up uh properly note that when you pick boards for a game and uh we'll uh whether you do it through the board picker or just the way I've done it here, it takes you to the same place. It shows you uh, by by default the the board's directory that you just set, but you can change it. So you could go and look somewhere else for a board. Uh, when I'm doing development work, I tend to do that a fair bit. Uh, and sometimes people are playing around with boards, they do that. And sometimes if you don't change this back here, even if you're, uh, you're uh, directory is set properly. If this is pointing to a different place, then uh, you're not going to find what you're what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So, looking in the right place for your boards is the the first thing. Uh, second thing is uh, you get into trouble with concealment when you uh, you get a password uh, mismatch. Uh, the the passwords in Vassal are uh, they're really just, I mean, they're a tool for controlling uh, concealment uh, more than anything else. They're not particularly uh, uh, strongly enforced. So I could go in right now and, and change my password there. I would no longer be able to see underneath concealment counters that I had created with my old password, but uh, I could do them with a new one. You can also set up for yourself uh, a number of different identities. I have at least three. Uh, I have uh, 
one, uh, this is my regular one. I have uh, one that I play a, a bunch of guys in a uh, uh, team uh, campaign game. And so we all share the same password on a team. So you can use the, uh, you can all see under the concealment <clears throat> counters of your team members. So you, you all have a different username, but if you use the same password, that's what controls concealment counters. So you can have uh, a team that, that can all see under each other's concealment uh, counters. And then I have a third one just for when I'm uh, doing different stuff or if I'm doing some development work and I wanna pretend to be a different person on my laptop, which is sitting right, uh, right beside me. So you can have umpteen usernames and passwords uh, if you forget them, don't call me. <laughs> there is actually a way of recovering your, your passwords, uh, the current password, let's put it that way, um, that, you're, that you're using. But um, Yeah, I have several identities, but I just have yeah. to use them with my different wives. <laughs> is that inappropriate? <laughs> probably has about as much security as, as these, ones, uh, these ones do here. And then I guess the uh, the third sort of problem area I talk about is extensions. You know that when you load up uh, at the beginning, in particular if you load a save game, you get a list of all the extensions that you have loaded on your device, but that were also used to create the game. And sometimes if you have a problem with things not showing up, <clears throat> there are... Um, uh, it can be because you don't have the the right extension uh, loaded, especially if somebody used the overlays uh, extension, uh, which every player should have on their screen on their on their device. It's a great overlay and allows you to add overlays by uh, by drag and drop. So it, if you don't see the overlays button up at the top of the screen, you don't have it. And go to Vassal Info and uh, and get it. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like here. You've got a list of all the different kinds of overlays. Yeah. Uh, let's look at uh, buildings. There X. Uh, so X10. Let's just drag that on, and boom. Uh, if you want to do uh, a larger one, let's say um, the grain. Uh, you got a five hex one a grain. You can put that here. The nice thing about these ones, uh, as I struggle to get a position, is you can uh, rotate these and then uh, move them in a position. They're a little easier to manage than uh, the uh, traditional method when you add them through uh, through board picker, and uh, they do have some. Uh, other, uh, whoops, Daisy, where did we go? If you alt select them there, you know, you, you can you can change grain to, maybe you don't want to change all the grain to plow fields, you just uh, mm. do, do that. So there are two methods of adding overlays. Uh, they both have their strengths and, and weaknesses, but, uh, uh, you know, people really shouldn't leave home without the, uh, the terrain overlays extension. It's a great tool built by, uh, Al uh, Canamore. Uh, so that's that's one overlay to uh, to point out. Uh, as well as good overlays, there are bad overlays in the sense that they're not meant to be harmful, but they were developed uh, earlier. They're obsolete. A lot of the functionality is is built into the game, and they can cause conflicts. So there's one in particular called uh, Chatter Plus which in its day was a perfectly good uh, overlay or a good extension, but is now obsolete and will cause a conflict with the new uh, chat window changes that, uh, that I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you get problems up in the chat window, duplicate versions of the window, uh, look at your extensions. Uh, if you've got Chatter Plus, just, just delete it. It's not needed anymore and it will cause... Uh, Cause some conflicts, and uh, but there's there's a bunch of other good overlays as I talked about the uh, the SK dice for those who who play SK, and that's getting increasingly popular. And a lot of people who've joined since COVID uh, have been starting with SK, so they might be interested 
in uh, in those. Uh, Basel info has a good listing of, of extensions and it's pretty clear what they are. I won't go through more and more, but it's worth every once in a while updating your extensions to the latest version and uh, deleting ones that are uh, that are obs obsolete. And is the idea that if an extension is popular enough, it just makes its way into the core game at some point? It depends. Some things, yes, and some things, no. One of the things that you do have, again, if we go back up to my list of, of extensions, you'll see my second extension is the BFP uh, extension. So that's a third-party extension that right. has all their counters in it. So you get any product that, that BFP has put out, they've got the counters for there. So that's going to stay as a standalone extension. It's their work, it's their product, and we're not going to uh, we're not going to mess with that. Um, but when we brought the uh, Finnish counters out and uh, Korea foreign uh, the Korea uh, counters out, they both started as extensions. Once we had got the bugs out of them because the extensions are easier to debug, then we brought them into Vassal proper. So depending on the extension, we'll use one strategy or uh, or another. Sometimes it's just uh, you know, with things that add stuff like buttons, people, some people don't, they don't want too much clutter. So if you never play SK, you'd never want to see the SK buttons. So why, why add that extension? So we don't bring everything into, uh, into Vassal, but where it makes sense, we certainly, uh, certainly do. I remember uh, early on loading the extension for locating snipers. Yes. Very simple. But yes. a beautiful, it was a beautiful thing. Is that is that built and in now? That is now built in. So it's uh, it's right up here. That green sniper button. Okay. Art Basel. So if you're still carrying around the sniper uh, extension, and you're probably a player somewhere who who does, uh, it's time for it to go. It's just not needed. It's not. Uh, and you know, if we make changes to Vassal, there's always a risk that it, it you know you can get into a, a conflict uh, with it. Right. Okay, fantastic. And uh, do you see anything farther down the line? So six 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 is coming out. I don't know how you came yep. up with that numbering system, but it sounds a little it's a little ominous. satanic. Yes, yeah. indeed. Well, uh, we're just going to blow right. To, <laughs> we'll live with that. But by <laughs> November, we'll have six six seven, so we'll all be good again. Um, yeah. So looking to. The longer term, there are a couple of different things that uh, I want to focus on. One I mentioned sort of fairly early on, and that is having uh, a game uh, updater. If I click on the file menu one last, uh, no, sorry, not the not the file menu, the uh, this drop down menu with the the guy with the the potato masher. You see right at the bottom there, uh, update game. Uh, what uh, that will do is, uh, I hope to, to make that, it doesn't actually work at the moment. It will be an enduring game uh, converter. So if you, if you built a game in 6.64, you saved it, and then you wanna come back to it, uh, maybe it's a setup file that people like to create. Uh, and it's two versions down the line. Uh, currently, you'd probably have some problems getting that game to work properly, particularly if it had uh, various uh, add-ons to it, such as overlays and things like that. So I want to make that a lot more seamless so that uh, if your game is missing things, like an extension, like an overlay, it will just go and get them. If the counters need to be updated from one version to another because we've added functionality like movement trails, it'll do all that for you. So even if you open a game that's saved with an earlier version, it will have all the functionality, the bells and whistles of the new game, and you as a user shouldn't need to, to, to worry about that. Um, we can give you the option to update or, or not, but once you update, it should just, just happen for you. That's a, that's a big piece of work. I think it's an important piece of work because, um, uh, you know, setup files really don't have much lifespan to them these days because you get a version or two away and there's just too much uh, change that isn't uh, able to be used in those 
those files. So uh, I think it's important, but it, it's important to get it right. Uh, and so that people can uh, have confidence to, to use it. We'll probably start with at least some initial steps in 6.67, but it'll it'll take a, uh, a, a longer than that to get it all working uh, correctly. Um, I also want to continue to do more on uh, terrain transformations and having uh, changes that we make visually to the map also reflect in the, the loss engine, which some do and some don't at the moment. And uh, I think there's more work that uh, I, I need to, well, there is more work that I need to do there and I'm getting to, uh, I'm getting to that. And um, then continuing to do other things to the loss engine to make it uh, uh, more consistent with the with the ASL rules. It's it, it's not a bad uh, tool at the moment, but it's not perfect. And hopefully, we continue to uh, to to work on uh, to work on it. So those are some of the things that, in particular, I'm going to be working on that certainly have a longer horizon than the next uh, one or two versions. Fantastic. Wow. Could you do a light woods with the Korea? Dave and I always forget the woods are light, you know, where you can shoot through them. Is that on the agenda or? Uh, no, it's not on the agenda because it's done. Is it done? You can change yes. the trees now to make them. Let's do it. So with this game here, uh, uh, these are just regular geo boards. So pick new boards for this scenario. Uh, we'll go terrain SSR. We'll go to uh, light woods. Oh, apply. Uh, okay, uh, done. Now you, uh, right? Okay, then click okay there. So yeah, you can see, oh, you can see yeah, visually yeah. how it's changed. Yes. And, if mm -hmm. we do, we draw a loss, you can see that it now treats those as hindrances uh, and not um, uh, obstacles. It says the hindrance is four because they are, uh, they're two. Two uh, each, right? Yeah, yeah. So it gets uh, gets that right. If you, if I draw a different loss where it picks up an orchard and a light woods, it'll be three, one for the orchard, two for the light woods. So uh, that's what I mean with trying to get transfer, terrain transformations and uh, uh, that you see visually and the loss engine better aligned. It works for those two, but there are lots of other transformations that don't work yet. And uh, I'm gonna keep, uh, keep working away on, uh, on adding them. That was a good one to, uh, to talk about. And, uh, of course, the challenge is, you know, that's something uh, that was done uh, probably uh, a year or two ago. But, um, you know, if you sort of miss it when it's announced, uh, you don't know to go and look for it. Right. Yeah, I'll bet that happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. One of the, just one other thing that people may not uh, also think about in the same uh, the same vein if we go back to, uh, let's click on the wrong damn thing. If we go back to the the sort of the board picker thing here, we go to terrain SSR. Uh, one of the things that many boards have are special overlays that are scenario specific. So they will make a change on a particular board that a scenario calls for. So if we click on board 53, uh, if you were using, you were playing uh, uh, hazardous movements scenario 10, fresh grit, you would be able to add an overlay to that board uh, and it would make the, uh, make the changes needed in that board. I think what that uh, board does is we're looking at board 53 in the background right now. And when I click okay, a lot of those stone buildings are gonna go to, uh, Go to wood. Yeah. So yeah. I just see all these buildings down here. They were they were stoned a few minutes ago. So if you have a, a scenario that is uh, uh, calls for 
uh, significant tra uh, train transformations, check down at the bottom of the list for to see if somebody's already built a board uh, specific overlay that'll do all of that for you, particularly if there's multiple changes. Uh, that's when people have often created uh, an overlay like that. Because that one does single, it looks like it's probably this, the rule might be single hex houses or wooden and Yes, two hex are are stay stone. Something like uh, some and like the others. Yeah, I, I I don't know specifically what it is, but yeah. uh, and uh, yep. So that's uh, that's a good thing to check. Very cool. Very amazing. This makes the game so easy to play now. It's easy. Yeah, <laughs> anybody can play. <laughs> That's right. All you need to know is know the rules and and know how to play. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it really, it's amazing it has because... come uh, a long way. And again, because of the changes that our counterparts in Vassal have, have done, we've got a lot more tools at our disposal. So some of the things that I've been showing you tonight are getting easier to do. And so the easier they get, the more we, uh, the more wow. we can do. Obviously, a lot of smart guys uh, contributing. Uh, every single one of the things you showed us really it makes makes sense. It's not like crazy feature creep. It's it all very sensible. Well, I hope so. And of course, there, again, we try to make things uh, give people as much choice as possible. If you like it, use it. If you don't, just play it as as you wish it. And I think that's the. Uh, sort of the mantra that that we have and not to not to force people to uh to do things probably one of the most uh controversial changes we made uh uh was when we enabled putting little red um uh counter uh corners on afes to point where the ca was and the first version i did that in i forced it on so that people would see it uh, otherwise, most people would never even look at it. They wouldn't know whether they liked it or not. In subsequent versions, we've made it uh, um, uh, a user uh, a user preference. I think you may have to restart to get it to work, which I I won't do right now. But let's have, oh no, let's see, see. So there's a preference there. Yeah. See how there's a red counter there in the oh yeah indicating the bottom, the bottom corner, red counter, mm -hmm. just a red marker. Yeah, oh, it yes. turns it on for all vehicles, uh, and uh, you know there's there's good reasons not to like it. It's not always the the right thing, but uh, again, when I forced that on people, and mm, there was some groaning about that, uh, <laughs> but that was deliberate so that people could see it and we could find out if people liked it or yeah. Or not. Now it's it's a preference, and I just uh, turn it right back uh, right back off again. There's not a uh, what's new. Like in the help menu, what's new in this version, so people can see uh, what was added or uh, some history of the major updates. There is what I call release notes. <laughs> so when I put a version out on uh, on Vassal, uh, I, I I list everything there. It's not built into okay. uh, the the game here. That's not actually a bad idea. I could put something in under uh, under help quite easily. Yeah. It would mm -hmm. just uh, you know, you get this thing here. That doesn't tell you very much, but uh, I could easily do something there that would people could see it in game uh, and know what uh, what is different. Because you know, uh, um, people read the release notes for uh, on Vassal.info about as well as they read the instruction manual for toasters or or coffee exactly. pots, right? <laughs> you, just, exactly. you just don't. So uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a, that's a good thought. I like that. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add today? I think I've, I've pretty well, uh, covered it. I would, uh, simply encourage people who see things that, uh, they think could be added or could be, could be changed. They see bugs to let me know. Uh, obviously we don't get to everything right away, but, uh, we, I always, uh, want to hear from uh, from people. I, as I say, I don't feel compelled to work on anything. I work on what interests me. So you mm -hmm. might have a change. It might be a good idea, but uh, I might not do it. But that doesn't mean somebody else won't. There's uh, This is open source. 
uh, software. You don't have to, uh, you know, uh, join a club and swear over your firstborn. You want to make changes to it. People can people can do it. And uh, so if not me, then then somebody else. So suggestions and ideas and problems. We want to know about them. And, you know, we do have a list that we we keep of that stuff, uh, which people can see it's on uh, it's on Git, GitHub which is a, a code repository, but there's a vassal uh, uh, repo there and you can see uh, uh, the issues that people have identified. And if somebody wanted to reach you, what would, or, or reach vassal to make a suggestion or complain, what would be the best way for them to do that? Uh, there's a couple of different ways. Uh, there, uh, depending if you're on either Facebook, Game Squad, or, uh, Discord. There are vassal uh, channels or pages or however their uh, forum on, on all of those sites. And I certainly, along with other people, check those regularly. It's a good way to ask for, for questions. Uh, people can use my uh, uh, email, which is dougerimmer at gmail.com. It's on uh, it's actually not on vassal.info, it's on another website, but it's out there so people can email me. Uh, I don't mind uh, I don't mind that. Um, and uh, as I say, yeah, Facebook, Game Squad, Discord all have uh, uh, vassal uh, venues you can use. Okay. Well, that's, Fantastic. That's great. Well, Doug, can't thank you enough for uh, taking the time and for all the unbelievable work. I mean, yeah, it, it's amazing. <laughs> it's really it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. Well, it's I, I have fun with it. Uh, I mean, it's it's not uh, difficult in the way coming up with rules and uh, coming up with scenario designs are. I am, admire those guys. I admire the guys who do the graphic stuff. If you see something graphical, it's not me. I don't do graphics, but the guys who do the uh, the boards and do some of the other graphic work, the counter graphics. I got a lot of admiration for them. That's uh, that's painstaking work, and uh, there are some uh, some really good uh, good stuff around. So, um, but uh, happy to do my uh, make my contribution uh, as well. And good talking to you guys tonight. It was fun. Uh, is this as fun being part of it as it is uh, watching or listening to it? Oh well, good. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> you 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 help make this a quality program tonight, yeah. not like the last one <laughs> that we did on our own. Um, well, we'll say goodbye then. Yeah, and, and uh, okay. thanks, thanks very All much. Right. And we Good say night and roll low yeah, and rally well, yep, but not but when not you're when playing, you're playing us. us. Excellent. That's right. <laughs> All, right, All right, thank you. Care.